Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. A distinctive aircraft evolved from the smoldering strife of the Cold War. One created with grit and innovative determination. The F-15 Eagle became a symbol of U.S. air superiority in the latter half of the 20th century. And its design can be traced back to the Soviet Union's Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-25 Foxbat. The MiG-25, operational since 1970, never lived up to expectations. But the possibility of what it could do led to the development of the world-famous F-15 Eagle. Although the MiG-25 proved to be a disappointment, the MiG-29 and Su-27 followed afterward. And these were more formidable. But the F-15 Eagle had been ready for them since 1976. Twin Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW100 220 or 229 turbofan engines, each capable of producing between 23,450 and 29,000 pounds of thrust, power the F-15 Eagle variant. These engines are not only powerful, but they also significantly contribute to the F-15's maneuverability and speed. They are regularly inspected and repaired by U.S. Air Force propulsion mechanics. Engine removal is a phase, or non-routine maintenance task that entails disconnecting the fuel lines, hydraulic connections, and electrical harnesses, before deploying lifting equipment to support the engine's weight. The bolts holding the engine to the mount are then loosened allowing the engine to be safely hauled away from the F-15 fuselage. Once the engines are separated, propulsion mechanics in the U.S. Air Force prop shop perform jet engine intermediate maintenance. During JEIM, the entire F-15 engine is taken apart, inspected, maintained, and put back together again. As part of the process, equipment such as boresight cameras are used to inspect hard-to-reach areas inside the engines. Propulsion mechanics also use this opportunity to perform time changes on systems or parts in the engine. All engine parts have a limited life, usually determined by the number of flight hours it has. Once that lifespan is over, it needs to be changed, and these specialists do that. For a complete jet engine intermediate maintenance, the process can take from 8 to 10 days. Once the engine is ready to be inserted into its aircraft, it must be tested first. That is the purpose of a hush house on U.S. air bases. A hush house is a specialized facility used by the USAF for ground run-up testing of military aircraft engines. This is done while they are attached to testing platforms or in the aircraft. It's essentially a soundproofed enclosure, which greatly minimizes the noise created during high power engine tests. This permits testing to take place at any time of day 
or night without causing inconvenience due to noise. Engine operation can be evaluated inside the hush house under a range of settings. Providing a controlled and secure environment for diagnostics, modifications, and verification of crucial repair procedures. An F-15E Strike Eagle is an upgraded F-15, intended to be used against ground targets. The two Pratt & Whitney F-Series engines deliver up to 58,000 pounds combined afterburner thrust as the pilot advances the throttles. Also shown by the flames blazing from the exhaust nozzles. In full afterburner mode, the F-15E produces more thrust than twice its weight. The plane hurtles down the runway as the brakes are released. The jet reaches rotation speed in seconds. And with a quick pull on the stick, it shoots skyward. Nose pointing almost to the vertical, depending on its loadout, which can be up to 23,000 pounds. Another aircraft intended for ground attack is the much slower but tougher A-10 Thunderbolt II. Originally designed during the Cold War as a tank killer, these aircraft are utilized mainly in close air support roles. Also known as the Warthog, it is powered by two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines. which produce 9,065 pounds of thrust apiece. Unlike the F-15's high-performance engines, the A-10's engines prioritize simplicity and reliability over raw speed. Its engines are mounted high and rearward on the fuselage. This is done to reduce foreign object debris ingestion and maximize survivability. Reinforcing the A-10 status as a close air support workhorse. The A-10's powerful T-34 GE-100 engines are evaluated at Moody Air Force Base in two portable hush houses. which are specifically intended for examining the Warthog's engine performance and resolving difficulties. In the hush house, the engines can be tested under safe working conditions with adequate protection for personnel operating on the floor or in the control room. These facilities are modular and can be quickly disassembled palletized and transferred to any location required. This exceptional mobility matches with the A-10's forward deployment mission, allowing on-site full power engine checks to ensure each Warthog is ready for upcoming close air support missions. Warthogs were designed to be sturdy aircraft that can take a beating from ground fire and keep flying. One of the aspects of its survivability is the easy replacement of most of its components, such as its wings. Air Force maintenance technicians must be skillful and meticulous while re-winging an A-10. The operation includes carefully removing the old wing structure, examining and preparing the fuselage connection locations.
and then carefully mounting the new wing using special equipment and assembly procedures. Detail is critical, especially when it comes to internal systems like gasoline and hydraulic lines. This critical endeavor revitalizes the Warthog and ensures mission readiness, for example, after having its wings damaged from ground fire. To deliver the most effective close air support possible, the A-10 was made to be slow enough to identify targets visually, but still fast enough to avoid most ground fires. The pilot utilizes their helmet-mounted integrated targeting system to find and designate targets for neutralization. Once a target has been identified, the pilot can use the GAU-8 Avenger 30mm 7-barrel Gatling gun to engage it, or one of their other weapons. Able to fire at 3,900 rounds per minute, the Avenger delivers devastating firepower. If required, the Warthog can carry a mix of bombs and missiles, including the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground guided missile. One of the best close air support aircraft utilized for decades by the U.S. Marine Corps were the AB-8B Harrier II. This versatile vertical or short takeoff and landing VSTOL aircraft has seen action in several conflicts. The AV-8B Harrier II is primarily maintained by Marines, specializing in aircraft maintenance and repair, who are part of the Marine Aviation Logistics Squadron and come from various military occupational specializations spanning from airframes to avionics. Their work includes everything from preventative maintenance to sophisticated repair chores. And they even handle the relevant ordinance. Routine inspections, service and system checks are performed on a regular basis after flying plans or set flight hours depending on the aircraft's technical manual. For deeper, more sophisticated repair, aircraft may undergo program depot repair, which is typically performed at the Fleet Readiness Center East in Cherry Point, North Carolina. Although AV-8Bs can be operated from land bases, they were developed to operate from U.S. Marine Corps amphibious assault ships, like the USS Essex. Attaching armaments to an AV-8B Harrier II on an LHD is the responsibility of the U.S. Marine Corps Aviation Ordnance Men. These highly skilled specialists handle, service, and examine the aircraft's armament systems. When loading the AIM-120 AMRAAM, an advanced medium-range air-to-air -air missile, strict safety measures are followed. including confirming the compatible weapons pylons and ensuring the mission and aircraft configurations authorize its employment. The missile is carefully hoisted using dedicated loading equipment and expertly aligned with the aircraft's hardpoints before being attached to the aircraft's armaments release and control systems. This essential operation provides the Harrier's vital long-range air-to-air capabilities. AV-8B Harrier IIs can defend U.S. Marines against air and ground threats. For that reason, it can carry up to 9,200 pounds of ordnance. Its loadout depends on its mission but it generally carries AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles for defense. For the ground attack role, it can carry Joint Direct Attack Munitions or 
AGM-65 Mavericks in terms of precision attack weapons. Furthermore, the Harrier II can also utilize rocket pods or strafe targets with its internal GAU-12 25mm gun. With the helmet-mounted queuing system, the pilot can designate and engage targets. Modern avionics have kept the Harrier II a force to be reckoned with. This includes a better radar and forward-looking infrared camera. Vertical landing is what makes the Harrier II unique. Up until the F-35 was developed anyway, the exceptional vertical and short takeoff and landing capability of the AV-8B is supplied by the Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine with four swiveling nozzles, which provide direct thrust control for takeoff and landing. On an LHD, the transition to hover mode begins with a decrease in speed while maintaining altitude. To stay airborne, the pilot adjusts the nozzles from a horizontal to a downward position, which is countered by throttle adjustments. As the airplane approaches the ship, it decelerates slowly. The fall speed and drift are controlled by constant minor adjustments to the throttle and nozzle angle. When the Harrier is correctly oriented over the deck, the pilot drops the throttle and carefully lowers it until it rests on the deck, completing the vertical landing. In the U.S. military, aircraft like the F-15C provide the country with a powerful air dominance fighter. Later, the F-15 would be upgraded to the F-15E, which is a very effective ground attack variant capable of long-range ground interdiction. Supporting U.S. forces are more resilient aircraft like the A-10 Warthog which can take multiple hits from ground fire and continue flying. Aircraft like the AV-8B Harrier II provide the cutting edge and air power to the U.S. Marine Corps, but are steadily making way for the much more advanced F-35B Lightning II. Whichever way you look at it, the U.S. seems to have the upper hand in air war. And in ground attack, and close air support roles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.